Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Lecture uh, 73. So today, uh, in this uh, lecture, we are going to discuss about the time, uh, which are, uh, which is required very much for uh, while you are uh, working with the transformation of the axis or uh, your coordinates you are trying to convert from the inertial frame to the earth fixed frame, and finally to your uh, the topocentric frame already that I have uh, topocentric and the uh, see uh, what the axis that we have described we have called this as the inertial frame and then the terrestrial frame which is fixed to the earth and rotating along with the earth and the topocentric frame which is fixed at the position where the observer is located with proper orientation. Okay, so, these are the three axes I have described earlier in the reference frame section. So, today I briefly uh, in this lecture touch the concept of the time and uh, thereafter we will go to the orbit determination. So, hopefully in the next 2 3 lectures we will wind up the whole thing. So, here in this figure I have shown here this is the sun and the earth is moving around the this is your earth moving around the sun here in this direction. And suppose somebody on the equator uh, or at certain meridian uh, uh, longitude he, he is sitting okay, and sun comes overhead at certain time. So, you can see from this place that if I draw a line joining the center of the earth and this point change the color. So, this line the pink line if this pink line will again become horizontal. So, the impression given on earth. So, it will rotate as the earth goes from this position to this position. So, this pink line will come here later on as it progresses further it will rotate all the way. Okay. And by the time it reaches here say the earth rotates once and earth rotates with respect to the inertial frame. So, inertial frame rotation say it is a distance star is there. So, with respect to distance star this pink line it rotates one once rotates once with respect to the star. So, the time taken from this place again coming to this place this pink line which is on the earth it rotates here all the way and comes again to this position. Okay. So, this the time involved this is called the sidereal day. Okay. In the meanwhile your earth is earth is rotating on its axis. In the meanwhile your uh, see th there are two things involved. In one sidereal day your earth is moved around the sun from this position to this position. Okay. From here it has started and it has reached to this position in one sidereal day. Okay. In addition earth is rotating on its own axis. So, this is a pink line. So, this line will rotate and again it will come to this position with respect to distant star means this is the horizontal line say. So, this also constitutes one sidereal day. Once one rotation of the earth with respect to distant star, but in the meanwhile the earth also rotates around the sun. Okay. The center of mass of the sun or it moves from this position to this position. 
it is moving from this position I is showing by blue dot to another blue dot. So, how much time it will take for this uh, pink line, the pink line which is shown here to come and coincide with this. So, if we do, so we will say that if you look from the earth, so exactly what is happening, say there is a distant star, somewhere a very distant star is there and you are sitting here on this place and as the earth is rotating, okay, so what you see that after certain time, uh, earth is rotating around the sun. Okay. So, so, as the earth has come to this place and from here this is your meridian okay, and the distance star will look like this because it is very distant. So, it will look again like this. So, right now you are here and sun is here in this place but you have your position has not come under the sun yet. Okay. So, this position to go to this place your position th this is your position and you have to go up to this place. So, this takes another some extra time and that extra time is around 4 minutes and how it is related? It is related to the fact that by the time earth rotates on its own axis. Okay. So, uh, on an average earth is rotating around the sun 1 degree per day. Okay. This is rotation around the sun, rotation around the sun. This is 1 degree per day and on its axis it rotates 1 degree per 4 minute or 1 by 4 degree per minute. So, this is the sun and uh, your pink line is here right now. Okay. So, by the time earth has rotated this pink line is coming to the pink position again here in this place. Okay. So, the one rotation of the earth is complete okay, with respect to the distant star. This one rotation is complete, but with respect to the sun it is not yet complete. So, this extra angle which has covered this is around 1 degree and to cover this extra angle it requires 4 minutes more. So, rotation of this pink line from this place to this place this requires 4 more minutes. So, if you say the rotation uh, you, you may be uh, aware of that earth rotates on its axis and 23 hours 56 minutes in one rotation complete. one rotation complete on its axis, but the 4 extra minutes which is required so that is required for covering this extra angle which is involved here and this is because of the movement of the earth el el around the sun. Okay. So, to cover this angle it requires 4 extra minute and thereby this uh, brown line will come to this position over the brown position. Okay. So, it is a time to shift from this place to this place and this extra time if we add we call this as the solar time. So, you can understand the difference solar time is measured with respect to the sun. So, for a person on a particular meridian two consecutive one movement of the complete movement of the sun. So, you are here over it and say this is the noon time and sun started over your meridian from here and again it returned back. So, this constitutes one solar day. So, the same thing is being shown whatever we have discussed all this concept it is a shown here in this place. And if a distant star 
you are here and a distance star is there okay. many light years away and you are sitting here on the earth and distance star once you rotate and distance star is visible to you so you can see that this we have written as the sidereal day c d real day means in one sidereal day with respect to a star one complete movement is there and in one solar day with respect to the sun there is one complete rotation so this is the difference okay and the difference comes because the earth has moved from this place to this place and because you can see that here in this case the, this line and this line are parallel here in this this is getting inclined to this line okay so this angle has to be covered and this requires your four extra minutes so this concept now we can move uh, with this concept we can move onward okay then we have the and for the definitions we, you can look into the see in this chapter uh, if i keep writing the definitions and other things we won't be able to uh, cover the concept so you can look into the books uh, because anyway these are the uh, just uh, details which you need to remember uh, it's a uh, and if you do not understand it you will again forget it so for the other things you can look into the books that i have uh, referred to So this is vernal equinox. Okay, and this is this may be the uh, say the, this we take as the Greenwich meridian. Or some this you can write. Let us say this is celestial object. we first dis discuss one concept and then go to the another one celestial object and this is your meridian your longitude so the angle from this place to this place this is called the hour angle from your meridian if you go in the backward direction in the west direction this we call as the hour angle or you can write this as the h dot a dot so the hour angle of vernal equinox from your meridian which is located here this will be measured from this point up to this so our angle of gamma it's a written like this our angle of gamma some celestial object is here so on the once you are looking from the earth so you will see celestial object on the celestial sphere so this is what is being described so with respect to this vernal equinox the location this is written as alpha and alpha this is called the right ascension so this is the right extension of the celestial object so local sidereal time sidereal time is measured with respect to the star so here in this case now we state that this will be measured with respect to the vernal equinox because your vernal equinox this is the line pointing toward the right now it's in the constellation of pisces but earlier it was in the constellation of uh, aries and therefore this uh, the horn of 
So, here is this sign is used. So, the local serial time instead of a star now we will say that because see, this is a fixed thing ok. The Vernal equinox quite frequently we are using and with respect to this all the angles we are measuring. So, it is a very convenient instead of using another star the Vernal equinox uh, definition is very convenient to work with. So, the, therefore, this we call as the our angle of the vernal equinox and we use this and from vernal equinox to the any celestial object this is a celestial object longitude uh, position. So, this we call as the right extension ok this is the particular notation used and if we measure distance along this the meridian then we call this as the declination. So, right ex extension and declination is shown by delta. So, the, that concept again we are not going to take up here. So, local sidereal time is the time say earlier you were just overhead ok over the vernal equinox your meridian was just over this. Now, it has moved from this place to this place ok. So, how much time has gone? So, that time we call as the sidereal time instead of a star we are measuring with respect to this. So, it becomes so convenient if we take vernal equinox and this is the reason instead of a star we are taking the vernal equinox because all the angles for the conversion we require with respect to vernal equinox. So, local sidereal time this becomes the right extension and plus the hour angle of that particular or any object this way also we can write hour angle of any particular uh, object here uh, the celestial object here in this place. or both the things can be also uh, explained in terms of uh, our angles that is the hour angle of uh, or your local sidereal time is nothing but your hour angle of gamma this is the way we can write. Here also our angle is appearing, but this is the hour angle of your particular celestial object let us name this as the x. Okay. and this is the right extension of the particular celestial object. So, the solar time we have discussed and the sidereal time also we have discussed. Now, we have four broad uh, category for the time system measuring system we are having ok. And this we can classify into the sidereal time already we have discussed sidereal time it is a uh, scale defined with respect to celestial objects less a celestial star it is defined with respect to a star or vernal equinox. And then the solar time this is written as m t or m s t this is called the mean solar time. Why mean solar time? Because the rotation movement of the sun as up appearing from the earth it is not uniform sometimes it moves fast sometimes slow and moreover the location of the uh, neither it moves over the equator not over the um, as it is apparent motion it keeps changing ok. It passes the equator to the north in summer and comes to the south in the uh, winter. So, this apparent movement with respect to the equator this is also involved and moreover this motion is not uniform and therefore, the mean solar time is de defined.
and to this connected is also the universal time which we write as u t. So, th there are three definitions for the u t, u t 0, u t 1 and u t 2. So, again it is a uh, just a matter of details and other things which we it is not possible to go at this stage because of the lack of time, but uh, m t and u t they are connected together. Okay. So, we have sidereal time the solar time or the universal time instead of solar time you can write universal time and then we have dynamic time, dynamic time. So, if we describe the motion of the celestial objects. Okay. So, in the dynamics itself you will see that d a square r by d t square as we have written the motion of the uh, any object or say the motion of the sun and earth system. So, there you, you will naturally see that the t is appearing. So, the t which appears here, okay. so this we call as the dynamic time because it involved it is involved in the equation of motion. And the fourth one, this we call as the atomic time, and this is connected with the electron movement. Okay, so this is a scale. I will write this here. A scale defined by. number of oscillations. This you may be aware of from your basic 12th class equation of oscillations in the energy states of atom or atoms. So, this time it is a it is a uh, it is maintained by various agencies in the world and uh, India also has its own time keeping system. So, this atomic time is maintained by this atomic clock Okay, dynamic time directly it appears in the equation of motion solar time as I told you this is with respect to the uh, motion of the sun around the earth and this is the basically the mean motion of the so, sun around the earth because the actual motion it keeps varying with time. And there is a sidereal time which we are now relating with the vernal equinox instead of a star. So, we will relate this with vernal equinox. Okay, so, uh, there are many many definitions involved and uh, unfortunately, we do not have that much of time to discuss all these issues. So, uh, let us take first the mean solar time. mean solar time hour angle of mean sun plus 12 hours. So, it is defined such that 12 hours is why it is being added, it is a because at the noon, at noon T m equal to is taken to be 0. So, that once sun is overhead, so at that time it is just 12 o'clock of noon. Okay. So, therefore, this 12 hours is added. 
in our angle already we have defined this is you are measuring west from the observer meridian. So, you are sitting at any meridian and from there then you are measuring. So, at noon mean solar time this becomes 12 hours according to the definition we are using. Now, how the universal time is defined? So, at midnight we can also note it at midnight at midnight the solar time m t will be 24 hours means 12 plus 12 that means sun is just opposite to your meridian. Now, the u t the universal time which I told that it is related to the m t and this is defined as mean solar time at Greenwich. So, instead of your meridian it is a Greenwich meridian. So, you are sitting at the Greenwich meridian and then defining this time and therefore, u t can be written as this remember this is the mean solar time at Greenwich meridian. So, T instead of just T m now this becomes this is your this was related to your location and this is related to Greenwich location plus 12 hours. So, Greenwich mean sidereal time. Now, they are getting connected the solar time and the sidereal time. Greenwich mean So, ST stands for sidereal time and MT stands for mean solar time. So, instead of writing solar time it is a mean solar time as I told you because of the non uniform motion of the sun as appeared appearing from the earth. So, therefore, GMST this becomes equal to this is your vernal equinox this is the Greenwich line and here this is your alpha Greenwich Greenwich meridian alpha g or alpha m whatever you want to write and this is the T g m. So, g m s t Greenwich mean sidereal time now we are going to define. Okay, Greenwich meridian let us say uh, uh, one thing uh, here we will locate the sun not the Greenwich because we are writing here T g m. So, will T g m is we are we are writing as the sun. So, this is your sun location. So, T g m and plus alpha m this is the right extension of the sun. Okay. So, this gamma angle this is alpha m plus T g m. and this is nothing but your g m s t Greenwich mean sidereal time. So, alpha m is the right extension of the of the mean sun ok. This is the right extension of the mean sun And as for this is the hour angle of the mean sun, so this is hour angle of the of the mean sun with respect to Greenwich meridian. 
this complete thing we have to mention okay and therefore gmst this gets reduced to now we can connect together here uh, this is tgm is ut minus 12 so alpha m plus ut minus 12 so this is how your greenwich mean schedule time and the universal time they are connected together and this universal time this plays a lot of role in the modeling of the rotation of the earth and then these times are connected to the atomic time also because finally for the measurement we are also maintaining the atomic time So, alpha m the mean sun, okay, right extension of mean sun of mean sun. This is written as 280.460674 degree plus These are really very precise values. This whole thing is in degree. This is the right extension of the mean sun, it is available from this equation, and this has been modeled. by observation and other things this has been modeled ok. So, once this is available, so you can see that alpha m is available and once alpha m is available here okay, then g m s t and u t they get connected together okay. because this was remaining unknown. So, this unknown is described here and what is this t 0? this T 0 this is measured in Julian centuries so for these definitions we will uh, write it uh, now so T 0 is the quantity here j 0 minus 2 4 5 1 5 4 5 the whole thing divided by 3 6 5 2 5 in one year we have 365.25 days so in one century we will have 365 this into 100 this gives you this many days. So, these are days in number of days in one centuries this is number of days in one century. And this is precisely the Julian date and what is Julian date again I will have to write here this is actually the Julian date of Julian date of J 2000 J 2000 that means on 1st of January 12 o'clock noon 
the Julian date is precisely this value. And from where this number is coming? This number is coming from the Julian epoch. Julian and Julian epoch, it is a refer to some date before Christ. So, we will continue in the next lecture. So, thank you very much.